So we've discussed the extent to which the size of a droplet can influence the infectivity or the ability of a virion to escape from that droplet and also to be transmitted to the deepest, uh, smallest passages in the lungs as a function of its size. There's also a dependence on the relative humidity of the air, which is related to size, since as we've seen, humidity does vary the size, but there's believed to be also a more direct effect of humidity, as I will now uh, try to explain. Uh, so I'm relying here on the recent work of the group of uh, Lindsay Marr, uh, two, two uh, papers uh, uh, cited here. Uh, so we can distinguish between two different types of pathogens. The first are the bacteria. And here, there's a, a monotonic dependence of the relative viability of the pathogen, of the bacteria, um, after a certain time period, let's say one hour. And what is found is that above uh, a certain threshold of humidity, around 80%, relative humidity, that there's essentially no change in the viability of the bacteria. They're alive, they're infectious. Uh, but as the humidity, relative humidity is reduced, uh, then there's a significant drop off in viability, which depends on the specific type of, vir uh, of bacteria, but it's a fairly general trend that it, that it comes down significantly as you approach more dry air. Now what's happening is the size of the droplets is shrinking. Uh, in the case of the bacteria, we can understand to some extent why this dependence might be here by thinking about uh, solutes that are present, especially salts uh, in, this, in the system, but also mucus pro mucosal proteins that we've also discussed. And when the, uh, the, the particles become more dry, uh, then what happens is that the concentration goes up and there's an increase in the osmotic pressure of the uh, fluid around the bacteria relative to the inside. And as with uh, many other kinds of cells, when exposed to uh, such high osmotic pressures, uh, that can cause uh, stress on the cell and potentially even rupturing of membranes or other structures within the cell and obviously then is not good for the viability of that cell and leads to deactivation. The case of viruses is a bit more complicated. So uh, some old data of Harper uh, from the 1960s on uh, the seasonal flu, uh, in particular human influenza virus uh, A, uh, which was recently uh, analyzed by Mars Group, showed that there was a viral deactivation rate that essentially was scaling uh, linearly with the relative humidity. So it's, uh, there's a faster deactivation rate in more humid air, less in dry air. This is one way we can understand the seasonal nature of the flu in that in more dry, wintry environments, especially away from uh, in, in sort of the northern or southern uh, hemispheres, uh, we can expect that then the virus would be deactivating less. But of course, that's compounded by the effect that in the winter, uh, people spend more time indoors. And so that's also leading to uh, more seasonal transmission. Now, if we convert the deactivation rate into a relative viability again, uh, now we see an interesting dependence in recent experiments, which were done using bacteriophages, which are models of uh, different kinds of uh, 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 human pathogens, including uh, the uh, seasonal flu uh, and uh, influenza viruses. And in particular, there's a non monotonic dependence, where essentially there's a maximum rate of deactivation around the range of 70 or 80% humidity, or 60 to 80. And similarly, the viability uh, was the lowest in that range. And the way the authors proposed uh, to explain that was a hypothesis that there are solutes that are present, which may be, for example, sodium chloride, or in particular, chloride ions, perhaps, uh, that when we reach the higher concentration in the shrunken droplets, uh, that there is, again, a stress on the virus. But in this case, uh, regardless of the details of the, uh, the, the, the mechanism of deactivation for these encapsulated viruses, the idea is that the cumulative dose or exposure to those solids is what's important. So if the shrinking happens very fast and we end up with a droplet nucleus of mostly bound water uh, and it happens over a short period of time, the exposure to those solutes is limited and hence we end up with high viability, low deactivation rate in dry conditions. Conversely, in very humid conditions, the droplets stay big. In fact, they may even grow because of the hygroscopic solutes. And in that case, uh, there's plenty of solutes present, but they're very dilute, and so again, the effect on the virus is minimal. And the greatest deactivation and also the maximum, uh, the sort of minimum viability um, is actually at an intermediate range of humidities. 
So this tells you that maintaining a comfortable humidity in the range of 50 to 80 uh, may actually be the best uh, for uh, minimizing the viability of uh, viral pathogens.